Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Random Call Sign, and welcome to the fourth and last installment of Budget Sim Racing. As the first three episodes were somewhat successful, it would be just right to finish this series with the topic that is missing. I've been doing this series with the objective of showing that sim racing does not need to be an expensive hobby, and while there are of course some really expensive equipments out there, with a bit of research and a lot of browsing and haggling, great deals can be had. The first video is about sim racing wheels, the second is about what sim racing titles to get, and the third is about some handy tips. But today's video will be about budget upgrades and ideas for your sim racing kit or rig. If you want to check the previous three videos, the playlist is in the card above, as they might be handy for you. Before going forward, if you enjoy these topics and types of videos and you would like to help out the channel, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons as it helps immensely. The first upgrade recommendation would be getting a load cell brake pedal set or upgrade the current pedal set you have. Of all the tips in this video, this one is the one that most substantially will change your game and hands down make you faster. In the first video, all the pedal sets that come with the wheels are potentiometer based. Potentiometer are great to determine how much input is given based on the position of the pedal. This works exceptionally well in the case of the throttle inputs as well as the clutch. Clutches are generally used on an on-off basis and throttles most of the times are used in that way as well, though with some feathering required in some corners. Brake logic is much different. For the brakes, the brain logic is not so much how much the brake pedal needs to move or travel, but how hard does the brake pedal needs to be pressed. This logic is exactly why some of the best potentiometer based pedals offer some neat rubber and spring rate combinations to better mimic this logic. However, a load cell which measures the pressure exerted rather than the distance traveled is able to replicate the brake pedal logic to a much better degree. To get a load cell brake pedal set, there are a few options. You can either upgrade your current set, which will very likely require some do it yourself, or buy a set that already has one. Rickmotec offers a G29 and T3PA modification set which you'll need to assemble, but in all honesty they are a fair bit pricey. If you find some plans you might be able to create your own set if you are so electronically inclined. Another way is forget about this do it yourself options by going directly to a set of Fanatec load cell pedals. On the second hand market you might find a few options like the Club Sport version 1s and version 2 pedals, the popular CSL Elite load cells or even the venerated CSR Elites. If you want to check out a review of the CSL Elite load cell pedals, check out the cards above. Of every tip of this video, the load cell will most likely be the most expensive, but it's the one that will bring more consistency to your racing. This next tip is about sim racing wheel stands, but first let me add some disclosure by saying that I'll be recommending a GT Omega stand and I have an affiliate link with them below. So while the general thought process will be the same for all sim rigs, it's only fair that I disclose this relationship so you can make up your mind. Sim racing wheel stands are useful in many ways. They are generally a more inexpensive way to have something compact enough to stand on a side or just store, while at the same time flexible enough to allow for many types of wheels and setups. I've used wheel stands from 2009 until basically this year, so I can see exactly why they are great options to have and what strong points they offer. To choose a wheel stand that is suitable for you, you'll need to choose something that has the ability to hard mount your wheels, hard mount your pedals, and if you have them, hard mount your shifter. You will also need to consider if you need to store it and where to store the wheel. For some users, a wheel stand will be something to move just aside when you finish racing, but for others you need to store it on a closet or under a bed. You will need to consider your storage use versus the pedal set and the number of bars the stand has. For example, I've used the Wheel Stand Pro for years, it was paired with the Fanatec CSR Elite, which has three pedals. Were I to store the wheel stand under a bed, it would be impossible because while folding it, the bar would be hitting the clutch pedal. Regardless, it was still a massively compact wheel stand. 
I've also used the GT Omega Wheel Stand Classic, and while it could be folded, the added weight and bulkiness made it more difficult to store. The number of bars might be important, as some would rather have a stand with two bars and feel a little more unimpeded on the leg section than having a wheel stand with just a bar between the legs. There are of course other solutions in the market from other brands like Next Level Racing, but all of them follow the same logic. Now, if you can't afford a wheel stand or a rig, and that's totally normal, that doesn't mean that options aren't available. Believe it or not, there are many options for what I call ghetto rigs, where necessity makes for some interesting solutions. On the background you can see such a solution, in this case I had just come into the UK, I had no desk to put my wheel and I wanted to play some Gran Turismo. So the solution here was to buy a cheap laptop stand on IKEA for about five pounds, add some weights to the bottom, and you will have here something that is usable while not the perfect solution. And this is something that you need to remember, don't make the perfect the enemy of the good. Speaking of IKEA, they also have the most popular ghetto sim rig of it all, which is called the pawn chair. As you can see from the background, it kind of feels very comfy, and it, there are some options if you look at it. The arms of the chair will get you some options, get maybe a board and a couple of clamps and then mount your wheel into the board and you'll have something that is usable. So the idea here is to find something you already have like a chair you have stored somewhere or a chair that you use a lot but can be modified and then tinker with it for options. Use your imagination, you might find you always had the equipment in front of your nose all the time. If a ghetto rig is not really your thing, but you still can't afford a stand or a rig, why not build your own? If you have the tools or get access to the tools, just go to a hardware shop or even a place where they might have some discarded boards and start the project. You can build a rig out of many materials, but generally wood or PVC pipes are the most popular. For wood-based rigs, you really only need a few boards to cut the size, some nails, maybe a bit of wood glue, then assemble it in a couple of hours. The other popular options are PVC pipe rigs, which can be definitely more complicated and will require some sort of blueprint. For those, you will need to get some pipes cut to size, some joints and T-joints, as well as some epoxy glue. The result will be a more solid build and I'd say one that has more options and will allow for more equipment and upgradability in the future. The last tip harkens back to the first video regarding budget sim racing, which is basically always check the second hand market. This is not only exclusive to equipment itself like wheel stands or new pedals or wheels, but for everything else too. You might find you can get an amazing deal for building materials or even a complete sim rig as well. Some people just need to get rid of their stuff and in rare cases they give it away for free. Another option is if you have a friend that is committing himself to uh, upgrade, ask what is going to be done with the other equipment. If your friend is keeping it gathering dust or just stored away, give him a half serious, half joke offer. You never know, he might accept it. So here you have guys, thank you very much for watching, I hope you have enjoyed and I hope this was informative. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to press like, subscribe, share maybe even. Also press the notification bell so you'll see notifications of new videos and streams when they come out. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.